Tokyo, one of the world's great metropolises. From between the buildings, we can see a clear blue sky. But at one time, Tokyo faced a severe air pollution problem. This was what the Tokyo sky looked like in the 1950s. The nation's economy was growing unabated, factories sprang up all over the city, and black smoke billowed into the sky from the forest of chimneys. The soot and smoke caused great harm in residential areas near the industrial zones. Suit and dust entered homes through doors and windows. It left its mark on drying laundry and accumulated on goods for sales and storefronts. Respiratory testing was conducted at elementary schools to determine what effect the pollution had on the children who breathe it every day. As the country rebuilt after the war, air pollution from factories began to become a problem in Tokyo. So, in 1949, the nation's first factory pollution prevention ordinance was enacted. However, it lacked any concrete standards. It wasn't enough. People realized that the war was really over and the city center began to blossom. But as it did, the sky too began to transform. The smog and black smoke began to roll in. The smoke was being produced by heating boilers in the city's buildings. The number of buildings rapidly increased in the center of the city and the smog blocked out the sun. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government, TMG, enacted the Suit and Smoke Control Ordinance in 1955 to deal with the air pollution being emitted by those building heating systems in the city center. Monitors judge the concentration of the smoke coming from chimneys. By comparing the smoke to colors on a chart, they could judge its concentration. Whenever an office building or factory emitted smoke with a concentration higher than a certain level, they were directed to reduce fuel use and to make use of higher quality fuels. In another measure taken to reduce the harm to residents, offices were set up around the city to offer consultations on how to deal with the soot and smoke. This is a survey taking place at Tokyo Tower. The smog has reduced visibility. As Tokyo Tower is a tall building, it was well suited for research into the condition of Tokyo skies. Suit and other matters were collected hourly and then examined to determine what types of pollutants it contained. Collection containers were placed in 27 areas around Tokyo to investigate the content of the suit and dust that was too heavy to float to the height of Tokyo Tower. This is suit, dust and other matters collected in the city center. It contains an abundance of fine residue generated by the burning of coal for heating. At the time, approximately 21 tons of suit and other materials fell on every square kilometer of Tokyo each month. By the mid-1960s, the lives of Tokyo citizens had become richer. However, in exchange for that economic abundance, air pollution in the city became more complex. The smoke in the air above Tokyo was gradually changing from black to white. 
the black smoke started to become difficult to see. Coal fuel had been exchanged for heavy oil. And though the exhaust was transparent, it still contained hazardous gases. A particularly large problem was sulfurous acid gas. Sulfurous acid gas is generated when the sulfur components in heavy oils are burned and it is harmful to the human body. The suit and smoke control ordinance only targeted the black smoke visible to the eye. They had reached their limit. In 1968, measures were set in motion to tackle the problem of air pollution. That year, the national government enacted the Air Pollution Control Law. The regulations were based on the idea that if exhaust fumes were released from tall chimneys in smokestacks, the pollutants would be dispersed over a larger area and their effect on life at ground level would be reduced. However, in Tokyo, with its high number of the generators emitting pollution into the air, the act had little effect. So, the TMG aimed to introduce its own fuel regulations to reduce the amount of pollution generated, and 836 factories in the city were called upon to start using heavy fuel oils with a lower concentration of sulfur. Particularly, groundbreaking was the Pollution Control Memorandum signed the same year with Tokyo Electric Power Company. The agreement was designed to reduce the sulfur oxide emitted by thermal power plants by approximately half, and it included OE thermal power plant, which was still in the planning stages. The Tokyo Metropolitan Pollution Prevention Ordinance was revised in 1970, and regulations regarding sulfur emissions from heavy oils and other sources were introduced in 1971. Through these approaches, great reductions were seen in sulfurous acid gas emissions and more specifically, the sulfur dioxide. Around this time, a system was installed at the Air Pollution Monitoring Control Center in order to monitor heavy oil use at large factories and buildings. When smog warnings and advisories were released, a message was simultaneously sent to 83 different factories and buildings directing companies to switch to higher quality oil. Regulations regarding district heating and cooling were enacted in the 1970 revisions to the Tokyo Metropolitan Pollution Prevention Ordinance and afterwards, introduction of the system itself was promoted. District heating and cooling is a centralized heating system that produces energy more efficiently. The city was aiming to cut smog levels as much as they could, and it was thought that this system would also have a large effect on reducing air pollution. This is the Shinjuku Shintoshin District Heating and Cooling System, which supplies heating, cooling, and hot and cold water to 22 buildings. <laughs> 